fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Boxer Ben fights hard and fair, so in the ring, you kids beware. He's dynamite because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Cheerios, the cereal everybody loves. No other cereal looks like Cheerios. It's shaped like little letter O's. No other cereal tastes like Cheerios. It's the only ready-to-eat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. No other cereal is like Cheerios. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! At a small army post near El Paso, a government official was having a discussion with the major in charge. Major Bagley, the gold shipment purchased by the United States from Mexico will arrive day after tomorrow. From here on, it's our responsibility. Yes, I know, Mr. Harvey. I'd feel better if my men and I knew this territory. But we're new here. This post has been established only a few months. Uh, the government has arranged for a trusted guide to take the shipment through to the railroad at Santa Fe by the best and safest route, Major. Uh -huh. The guide is a masked man known as the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger? Well, I've heard of him, but I've never met him. Uh, nor have I. He rides with an Indian companion. I've been advised they'll arrive here the same day as the shipment. I'll notify my men to watch for them. If all I've heard about that masked man is true... It will be a relief to have him guiding the shipment to Santa Fe. The next day, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode the trail northward along the Rio Grande. For a few moments, the two men rode in silence. Then they heard hoofbeats following them. Another coming over rides behind us. Him reach for guns. As the rider behind them reached for his gun, the Lone Ranger quickly drew and fired first. Oh, 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 Keep him covered while I attend to his shoulder. Ah. The Lone Ranger bandaged the man's wound. Then Scarface was tied to his horse. He must have a yes. here note dropped from Pella's pocket. Let me see. Hmm. Listen to this, Tonto. Senor Scarface, the news you sent about the gold shipment is big. I shall be willing to have my men work with you as you suggest. When you arrive in El Paso, speak to the barkeep in the Silver Dollar Cafe. He will direct you to me. Regards, Pedro Moros. Oh, them know about gold shipping. Yeah, we would have got it, too, if you hombres hadn't turned up. We're glad you turned up, Scarface. We'll see to it that your friend Pedro and his men meet with a big surprise. All right, let's go, Tonto. 
Come on, boys. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Later, after Scarface had been turned over to the sheriff in Fayville, Tonto returned to the grove on the edge of town, where the Lone Ranger was waiting. Oh, Scarface, oh, fella. Easy, Scarface. Oh, not the Lone Ranger. A figure suddenly stepped from behind a tree nearby. Great Canyon. Huh? Scarface. Let me leave you with Sheriff. You don't have time to get... My impersonation of Scarface must be good to fool you, Toto. Kim Asabi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you look like fella me leave a jail. Me plenty fooled. <laughs> but why disguise face with Scar like other fella? Because I've decided to take Scarface's place and meet the notorious bandit Pedro Moros. A chance to find out what he's planning to do. Well, that's a good idea, but plenty risky. Perhaps. But if I fooled you, I should be able to fool Pedro. Let's start now for El Paso. Yes, sir. Easy, fella. Easy, fella. Come on, That night, the Lone Ranger, still disguised as Scarface Jeffers, went to the Silver Dollar Cafe. The barkeep directed him to room 102 at the local hotel. Pedro Moros, a surly-looking Mexican, was playing cards with one of his men as he waited for the expected arrival of Scarface Jeffers. Well, I win again, Lucky. Yeah, uh, you ought to be named Lucky instead of me, Pedro. Uh, see who that is. All right. Howdy. I have a note from an hombre I'm supposed to meet here. You Scarface, Jeffers? Yeah. We're waiting for you. Come on in. Right. So, at last you have arrived, huh? Yeah. I have your note, Pedro. Here. Never mind him, Mark. I've seen your picture on hand, Bill, so I would know you anywhere. Porky has told me all about you. Porky? Oh, yeah. He did not ride here with you? No, I... Came alone. Oh, well, no matter. I thought you would meet him in Sayville. He must have missed you. But he will show up before we go through with our plan. Hey, Pedro. Those fancy guns and those bullets. Huh? I've seen them before, worn by a certain masked man. No one else would have guns like that. But if that is true, how would Scarface get them? Like yeah, that? that's what I'd like to know. The hombre I was talking about, known as the Lone Ranger. I, I have heard much about He's him. He's a tall hombre like Scarface. <laughs> You're smart, mister. But I told you I ran into that same masked man on the way here. Managed to ride up behind him and got the drop on him. I found out he was on the way to guide the shipment from the army post to Santa Fe. Now you have his guns and gun belt. You mean you... Yeah, you needn't worry about him now. Because you're Scarface, you are smarter than I heard. We shall go far together. Sit down, sir. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, what are your plans, Pedro? I have wait for you, senor, to help make the plans. There are two trails to Santa Fe. The gold will be well guarded. A longer trail is the safer one for them. There is no place for ambush. Yeah, men at the army post are new. They don't know the territory. Without the masked man to guide them, they'll take the shorter trail across the canyon bridge. Now, if we weaken that wooden bridge so it won't hold a wagon, it'll be easy. The guards in the wagon will drop into the canyon... And we go get the gold. If we were sure they would take the bridge trail... Now, yeah. wait, Pedro. I have an idea. What? I'm as tall as a masked man. I have his guns and silver bullets. If I wear a black mask, get a white horse, and an Indian to ride with me, I could go to the post posing as him and make sure the wagon loaded with gold travels the bridge trail. Oh, go on. That is a good plan, Pedro. The wagon is to leave the post at noon tomorrow. It will take about an hour to reach the bridge. We will weaken the bridge and be waiting there. The Lone Ranger left the hotel and rejoined Toto. The two men made camp for the night near town, and the masked man told the Indian of his plan. Then he said, Of course, I'll recommend the longer trail, Toto, and guide the wagon by that route. Ah, uh, but what you do about gang waiting at bridge? After we go to the post in the morning and meet the government official and the major, you go back to town with a note to the sheriff. 
He and a posse will be able to surprise and capture Pedro and his gang. Uh, we continue by the longer route for Santa Fe. Early the following morning, Porky, one of Pedro's men, returned from a trip to Seville. He told the gang leader Scarface had been captured by the Lone Ranger and was still in jail. Pedro, realizing the truth, exclaimed, Ah, we have been tricked. Yeah, Lone Ranger must have come here posing as Scarface. See. Si. But two can play at that game. What do you mean? Wait. I have a few batches I have taken from time to time. Here is the type of the sheriff's badge, Porky. You wear it. It's still early, and the masked man may not have gone to the army post yet here. Finish on. Yeah, but but why? You are not known around here. You ride to the post. Tell them you are from Sayville. That the Lone Ranger was waylaid. That a bandit is posing as the Lone Ranger. And if our trick works, the masked man will be in for much trouble. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one that have that happy people have to say. Eating our Wheaties and do, do, do an okay. Okay. Right. That's something champions know everywhere, wherever you go. Take Parbust and Sammy Sneed, born in old Virginia. Slam and Sam has been up on top for years and eaten his Wheaties regularly. And Al Rosen, born in sunny South Carolina, clutch hitter with the Cleveland Indians. There's Al at the plate. Here's a pitch. Another solid sock for a solid champ. And say Al Rosen's been eating Wheaties for 23 baseball seasons. That's the way it goes. South, north, east, west, Wheaties. Why, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doing doo, 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 an okay now to continue. Pedro Moros found out that his pal Scarface Jeffers, whom the Lone Ranger was impersonating, was in jail. And another crook, Porky, wearing a deputy's badge, was sent to the army post, where he arrived before the Lone Ranger and Toto. Porky was taken to the Major's headquarters. Deputy, I understand you have an important message for me. That's right, Major. You're expecting a certain masked man this morning? That's right. What about him, Deputy? Well, he and the Indian were ambushed. Uh, they're wounded back in Sabre. Right, Who's sir? got? Well, that isn't all, sir. I came to tell you the bandit who gunned him took his horse and guns, and, well, he's coming here posing as a lone ranger so as to lead you into an ambush. There's an Indian with him. I'll have the guards arrest them as soon as they arrive. Well... Maybe you better play along with them for a little while and find out which route they recommend. Then take the other one. Good idea, Deputy. You'll be here, of course, representing the law. You Well, take... uh, I have to go see the El Paso Sheriff. Uh, you put those two in the guardhouse and we'll send for them later. Very well. And thank you for warning us. The Lone Ranger and Tonto arrived at the post a short time after Porky left. They were immediately taken to the Major's headquarters, where they were received by the Major and Mr. Harvey. After learning the Lone Ranger intended to lead the wagon by the longer route, his manner changed suddenly as he said, So you definitely intend to lead the wagon and guards by the longer route, hmm? That's right, sir. Now, just a moment, please. Come in, Sergeant, and bring the guard. Yes, sir. The Lone Ranger paid little heed to the sergeant and the three soldiers who entered. Two of them stood behind the masked man, and two behind Tonto. Then... All right, sergeant. Cover and disarm them. Right, sir. Don't move, either of you. Uh -huh. Take their guns, men. Right, Wait, sergeant. what's the meaning of this? Uh, we have their guns, Major. Good. Take them to the guardhouse. Uh, hold on, Major. You're making a mistake. There's no mistake. A deputy sheriff from Sayville brought us the news about the real Lone Ranger and his Indian friend. You ambushed them then had the nerve to come here posing as the masked man for the purpose of leading us into a trap. Oh, wait. Let me explain Quiet. what... Take them away, Sergeant. Don't move from either of you and you'll get a bullet. Just to let you know your plan failed, 
The wagon and guards will take the shorter route to Santa Fe. No, Major. Let me... Get turn. up and get going. Disturbed by the sudden turn of events, the Lone Ranger paced the guardhouse as he talked to Toto. Pedro Morales is smarter than I thought, Toto. Scarface must have gotten word to him. Now the Major refuses to listen to an explanation. Ah. Fellow who come here wearing deputy badge. One of Morales' men. Of course. Uh, look through window, Kimasabi. There go wagon with guards. And government fellow ride with them. They'll reach the weakened bridge that crosses the canyon in an hour. Pedro and his gang will be waiting to take the goal when the bridge falls. What's worse is that all those men will be killed. That's right. I must find some way to convince the major. <laughs> Perhaps I can get the guard to take him a note. I have a pencil I'll write on the back of a handbill I have in my pocket. If he doesn't read this and realize he's been tricked, the goal will be taken and the men with the wagon will be killed. <laughs> A short time later, a trooper entered the Major's headquarters. Trooper Johnson reporting, sir. Well? Sergeant of the Guard sent me here with this note, sir. A note? From the masked prisoner, sir. I'm not interested. I'll tear it up. Major, the masked man insisted it's a matter of life and death. Uh, all right, I'll see what he's written. You may leave, Johnson. Yes, sir. Major Bagley, this is a matter of life and death. <laughs> I must convince you we're not impostors. Colonel Kenton of Fort Stockton asked me to come here. He told me some facts that no impostor could possibly know. Huh? You are engaged to his sister, Irene. You're to be married a month from now. He spoke of you as Mike Bagley. Said it was a nickname he gave you at West Point when you were roommates. If need be, I can give you more facts. But it's vital that you see me at once to save the lives of the wagon escort and to save the gold shipment. Well, by thunder, he must be the real Lone Ranger. I'll see him at once. When the Major came to the guardhouse, the Lone Ranger briefly told him what had happened and what Pedro Moros planned. The Major, now fully convinced of the Lone Ranger's identity, said, Great. Scott Morrow just tricked us. I'm sorry, I didn't believe you. Oh, forget that. The main thing now is to stop the wagon before it reaches the bridge. To have troopers move in from both ends of the canyon to capture Morrow's and his gang. Yes, I'll give the orders right away. We haven't much time. Let's catch the wagon. I'll ride with you, Antonio. We leave immediately. <laughs> On the trail, the wagon, escorted by eight troopers and led by the sergeant and Mr. Harvey, moved toward the bridge over the canyon. Oh, get up there. Get up there. They were about 300 yards from the bridge when they heard shouts behind them. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Look, the masked man and Indians. Oh, wait, Major Bagley is with them. Oh, 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 Mr. Harvey, we've made a grave mistake. This is the Lone Ranger. What? Thank heaven we stopped you before you reached that wooden bridge. I don't know how they convinced you, Major, but that deputy told us... I am thoroughly convinced. Pedro tricked us. He purposely discredited the masked man and Indian, so did you take this room. I'm not convinced, Major. This man was clever enough to impersonate the Lone Ranger. And evidently he's clever enough to change your mind for his own purpose. This wagon is my responsibility now, Major. We'll go on, Sergeant. No. These men are under my command. Sorry, Major. Your authority over these men ceased when they left the post. I carry a special order from the Secretary of War, giving me complete authority over this detail. Sergeant, we'll move on now. Away, Mr. Harvey. Believe me, that bridge... Hey, look. A farm wagon coming down the grade to the bridge on the other side. Uh, that driver will be killed. He must be warned. Montpelier! <laughs> The Lone Ranger urged Silver forward, hoping to warn the driver of the farm wagon in time. Stop your wagon! Don't go on the bridge! Come on, Silver! The heavy farm wagon rolling down the steep grade to the bridge was too close to be stopped. The Lone Ranger again shouted, Jump! Jump for your life! Oh, oh. The masked man watched as the wagon driver, realizing the wagon couldn't be stopped in time, threw down the reins and jumped. A moment later, the wagon rumbled onto the wooden structure. The 
Major and Mr. Harvey rode to the Lone Ranger's side near the edge of the canyon. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa there, great heavens. That might have been our wagon. We'd have been killed. That's right, Mr. Harvey. Look, down in the canyon, Cooper's fighting a large group of men. The Major's men have moved in on Pedro and his gang, Mr. Harvey. They weakened that bridge, hoping to trap the wagon and its escort. The battle in the canyon was short. Soon it was over, and the troopers rode away with the Moros gang as prisoners. Mr. Harvey, stunned by what had taken place, spoke. Major, I apologize for my attitude a while ago. I was sure you'd been tricked into riding here with the masked man. That's all right, Mr. Harvey. Let me give you all the facts. Briefly, the Major related the facts as he knew them. Then he said, Your wagon detail is awaiting your orders, Mr. Harvey. Uh, Please, Major, my hope is that the Lone Ranger will take over entirely from here on. I, uh, I give my word I'll not open my mouth again. I'll uh, go back to the wagon now, Mr. Harvey. And give direction for reaching the other trail. Now that Pedro Moros and his men are captured, I'm sure we'll have no further trouble. Ah, uh, you're in good hands now, Mr. Harvey. Yeah, we had a very narrow escape. Even a farmer across the canyon owes his life to the masked man. Too bad he had to lose his farm wagon and horses to convince me. Well, <laughs> I'm glad Colonel Kenton saw fit to divulge a few of my secrets to the masked man so he could convince me. (laughs) I'm sure that from now on we could never be tricked into thinking he isn't the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.